Um, Cinestill. Let's talk about Cinestill, man. It's becoming an issue. Okay, first off, film photography has become increasingly more expensive through the years. I was able to buy film for, you know, few dollars back in the day and now like any film is never less than 10 bucks or so so shooting film has becoming increasingly expensive uh, there's a price issue developing is expensive shooting is expensive uh, the cameras are getting more and more expensive and, and less common and it's becoming like shooting film has becoming kind of a a very expensive hobby like i'm not comfortable this, the, the, in the moment in which um, film photography is right now i i don't enjoy the landscape that we're embedded in but um on the midst of all of this there's one thing that has surprised me in the last few years and it's this um kodak still makes film of course film for movies movie film which is great film is a great medium you know for making films but uh, as Kodak produces these movie films, people can buy them, uh, and I've talked about this. It, it, if you buy a roll of film, like a 35mm roll of film directly from Kodak, it comes in a big can, and I have tutorials on how to re-spool those into little cartridges so you can buy a bulk of you know, 35 millimeter film uh, and like a thousand feet and you can make your own rolls. Like it's not difficult, you just need a dark bag and that's it. You can do it at home fairly easily. Even though the information is out there and it's easy to do, most people don't want to get into the hassle of re-spooling their own films. Like it's, it's, it's not a fun task, it's boring and um, just sourcing the big, you know, can of film buying a bulk loader, getting a dark room, sitting there and just bulk load your film for an evening until you have like a, I don't know, a hundred rolls or whatever. It's a tedious task. It's boring. Nobody wants to do it. Like I do it because I want to save money because I'm a cheapo, but otherwise I wouldn't do it. So if you can avoid doing it, uh, you can pay and you can pay and buy film. Now in the last, I will say five years, so many new films have arrived. Uh, these new films tend to be old re-spooled film. So old Kodaks, old Ilforts, old Fomas. The most notorious one is the 500T. Uh, and I say it's the most notorious one because you have probably used it if you have ever purchased Cinestill. So Cinestill is a company that what they do is they buy Kodak film and they re-spool it uh, and they remove the Remjet. Um, the Remjet is a coating that they put on the film um, and if you shoot the film in a normal camera, when you develop it, you need to remove the Remjet. I have talked about this, I have a video about this, I'm gonna leave it somewhere up here so you can uh, see how the Remjet is removed. And it's, a, it's not a fun process, but it's not terrible, it's just like whenever you're uh, developing your film, just you put it in the bathtub and you clean it with your thumbs and you just scrub it with your thumbs and you're good. Like it's 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 a fairly simple process. Um, but not a lot of people uh, develop color film at home. It's not as common. So I do it because I develop all my films at home. But for people who don't want to go through the hassle of having chemicals in their place and having the things to develop, um, they just want to buy a film that doesn't have the remjet uh, so they don't need to remove it. And Cinestill sells Precisely that. They sell you uh, Kodak Film 500T without the Remjet. That's cool. Uh, you can buy it. The issue is, one of the issues, is that it's pretty expensive. Cinesteel has always charged premium for what they're doing. The issue started not uh, like a few years ago when people start respooling their own like they will buy cans of 500T and they will respool it and sell it like a new film. Juanito 500T, you know, like uh, Eduardo 500T is my new film, buy it, and I'll just grab a Kodak and respool it, you know? Uh, retail sellers in their one bedroom apartment start removing the Remjet and then respooling the film and selling it. So Cinestill is now um, asking Cat Labs to stop selling their film because Cinestill has trademarked the 800T idea. So you can't sell a film and claim it's 800T because Cinestill wants to have uh, the ownership of the notion of 800T. 
claiming this is our way of selling our film. You know, the 800 ASA tungsten film is our film, you can't sell 800T. So two comments I want to make on this thing. One, uh, it's kind of silly and litigious to say that a number and a letter belongs to you. Uh, by that token, you know, Kodak can say nobody can sell 64T or 100T because those are, you know, the ectachrome uh, numbers we've used since the 60s, so you can't do it. it. Makes no sense to me. Like, you can't copyright the number of the ISO and the type of film so nobody else can do it. Um, that's not how it works. It also the other thing that's more complicated is that it gives me, you know, this monopoly vibes, uh, like not wanting to have any kind of competition, like we are the only ones who are going to be able to sell respool Kodak film. If it was their film and they were producing it and making it in their own, you know, factories, man, you can do whatever you want. But taking Kodak film, removing the Remjet, packing it as something new and then forcing other sellers to not do what you're doing because you want to be the only one doing it I don't know man that doesn't that doesn't strike a nice chord with me I, I don't like that I think that's a pretty bad thing um, I'm not saying by this that the other small labs are perfect like there's some people complaining about how cat labs you know proceeds with their business I don't know, I haven't dug into that, I have no idea, but um, from what I've seen on Reddit, things are pretty intense. So here's my take, um, I'm not gonna buy anything else from Cinestill. I don't like those kinds of practices, I don't like when a company decides to be the only company who can do something and just use their money and their lawyers to stop other companies. Like if. If you truly believe in capitalism, which I don't, but let's say you truly believe in capitalism, you believe that competition is what moves things forward, you believe in the free market, things regulate themselves. To me, that's just mythology, but you can believe whatever you want. If you can truly believe that, this practice is scummy anyway. It's not a good practice. It's bad. It's monopoly driven. It's trying to stop competition. It's not good. You can do whatever you want. You can support whatever business you want. But whatever business you support, please try to be aware of the practices they put out there and try to be aware of what people are doing. Try to be aware of what kinds of businesses are you supporting with your money because your money speaks for you. When you buy something and you're supporting a business, that is your way of showing support to their practices too. So put your money where your mouth is. If you like something, go for it. And if you disagree with the practices of a, of a company, don't buy their things. That's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna stop buying uh, things from Cinestill until they clarify what the hell are they doing by prohibiting other people to use a number and a code name um, and basically asking everybody else to stop selling film and do exactly what they do. They, they don't own the film they buy, they're just a mediator. They're just giving you Kodak without Remjet and I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a good enough uh, service to start shunning other people from doing it. I think it's a nice thing to do. It, if you're charging premium for it, it's not cool, but you can charge as much as you want, you know, it's a free economy. But if you're gonna do that, do not stump on other people who are maybe doing the same for cheaper and, and pushing things and making things cheaper for the film community. My battery on my camera died. As you can tell but um, here's what I wanted to say anyway so I think it's a good idea to stop people from pushing prices you know up you don't need to support the big company that charges premium just because it's a big company that, that charges premium uh, nobody cares the film you shoot truly uh, nobody's gonna surprise and be like oh my god you shoot cine still you're you're loaded you're special nobody cares you can shoot Natura 1600 nobody cares um, what does matter is what you do to the environment, to the economy of film photography. So, yeah, I, I think it's a, this is a good moment to say as a community, you know, A, let's stop selling Kodak as a, like it was a new film. Let's just make it very transparent that we're selling Kodak. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's one. It'll be good because I'm a little bit tired <laughs> of so many people 
and like small companies and studios just selling Kodak films, pretending they just made up a new film. Let's, I think that's not a good practice. That's A. And B, you know, if we can stop this big monopoly vibes that are starting to emerge in the film community, let's stop them. I don't think that's uh, healthy for us. It's not healthy for the community. It's not healthy for anybody. We can both agree that monopoly is not good and these kinds of practices heavily damage uh, what we're looking for, which is to make film more accessible, fun, and easy to shoot for everybody. So let's at least unite over this one and try to make, you know, things better. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. I just needed to say it before the, the, the camera ran out, but I ran out of batteries because that's life. Okay, I love you so much. Take care. Thank you so much for watching, and I will be seeing you pretty soon. Bye.